My next guest, Canadian-Israeli comedian and content creator, Renny Grinchpan, is known for her funny videos on what it's like being a foreigner in Israel, raising a baby with an Israeli husband, where sometimes things get literally lost in translation. But these days, Renny's content has become a little more somber. Take a look. Jewish students across America, you are unsafe right now, and this is why. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. This was a college campus anti-Semitism hearing that happened yesterday. This question posed to the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and UPenn is an extremely simple, clear question with a very obvious answer, and yet they could not provide that answer. If the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? I am beyond words. I am horrified. I don't understand. The question is so clear. Why is she smiling? Who is this monster who is leading the young generation into the future? Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted at, at an individual. It's targeted at Jewish individuals. When the president of a university cannot condemn open calls for genocide against a group of people, it's only a matter of time until the genocide becomes real. Yeah. Renny, if you were <laughs> if you were in those in that hearing, what would you say to those university presidents? I probably would be too busy crying and shocked. You know, the first few moments of seeing that clip, I my husband had showed it to me. We woke up and my mouth was my jaw was on the floor. I was like, what is that? Really? Just utterly shocked. Um, but actually, somebody who I follow, he's called the older millennial, and he said that the best, you know, things that could have been said to her was, A, what is this context that you're talking about Yeah, uh, where genocide is okay, to, or calling for the genocide of someone is okay, and B, if any other group were targeted with calls for genocide, LGBT community, the black community. You know, it would be so black and white, the response. And I think that's what's so devastating and, yeah, heartbreaking and confusing and Yeah, everything. it feels like this war has is obviously has more than one front. We've got Gaza in the south, Lebanon in the north, and now the West Bank is also exploding. But there's also... Um, the social media war front, and, and that makes it almost even more confusing. What's been the biggest challenge for you as a content creator? Um, I think two things, staying on top of you know everything that's happening. The news is running so fast yep. lately. Every single day there's something new, and you always want to have your hand on the pulse. Um, but also I w I'm interested in doing pieces that are more general talking about, you know, why is it that the young Western generation of people can't side with Israel and can't understand our perspective? Um, and I think a big part of that is it's very psychological and it's something that needs to, we need to get into their psyche and uh, make everything as shareable and uh, concise and to the point and everything is possible and hopefully eventually work through their brains and get these messages across slowly, slowly. I don't think one individual video will ever do the trick. I think it's obviously a process. Do you think this is anti-Semitism that we're facing or do you think this is just a complete miseducation when we're seeing these American college students that are basically chanting from the river to the sea with no understanding of, if we're going to talk about context, of what that actually means? Yeah, it's a really good question. <laughs> I think it's probably a combination. Sadly. But I think, um, you know, when I grew up in Canada, uh, I was taught that everybody's equal and everybody has the same default shared set of values. And I think these young idealistic kids want to believe that, you know, if Hamas or you know, Hamas supporters in Gaza had the ability to live totally freely, um, that they would choose a life similar to the American lifestyle with American values. And 
they don't understand that I think the concept of terrorism is lost on them because, you know, a lot of... Well, now of we're glorifying Osama bin Laden on TikTok, so... Yes, yes. This, is a, this is a generation who's obviously born after 9-11. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to ask you, um, have you received hate messages on, on yeah, of social course. media? Yeah, Oh, my God. Wow. I had to... I used to be kind of like a mom vlogger type thing, and I yeah. had my son every so often appear on my page, not all the time, but every so often. And I even had Mama to Oz in my bio on TikTok, and I had to remove everything because... Oh, wow. At first, I got a lot of comments about myself, and I was like, you know what, this is fine, I can handle this, who cares? But then people started talking about me and my son by name. What? And I'm get, I'm like, I could get emotional about it even right now, because I'm, yeah, but it and scared now me. you're pregnant with your second child here in Israel. You're running from rockets from here in Tel Aviv. We had rockets just an hour ago, right here. Um, and on the other hand, you're facing anti-Semitism in your home country. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about bringing another child in this world? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what a question. You know, I think even before all of this erupted, if I were to really think about the state of the world, I probably wouldn't bring any kids into the world. <laughs> As ridiculous as that sounds, just because of, you know, I really am scared for the environment and all these things. Um, so I kind of, to use the other side's term, produce children in a vacuum. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I really don't, um, I, I try not to think about that. Because you know what? Every generation, during the Holocaust, people still gave birth. Yeah. And you still have to have hope, I think, for the future somehow and and have hope that things will change. Look how fast and quickly things have changed in the past, you know, half century alone. So, yeah, hopefully. bringing a little bit of, of light amidst all this darkness. There's so much uh, fake news online. How do you, you as a social media content creator, how do you even begin to fight it? So it's funny because Somebody came up to me after a conference. Uh, I gave a talk at a conference, and they were like, is this going to go anywhere? What are you going to accomplish? Like, it's not going to work. And I'm like, you know, we can sit back and think that way and then not doing do anything. Or we can uh, fight that logic and at least try, you know, at the very least try and slowly, slowly, like I said, whittle away at this chip and this block and and make some progress eventually you know bds was on campuses for decades before yep. uh you know this war and and sjp and all these like crazy protesters that we see on college campuses now so they've been working the ground for decades and i think our real work is going to start after this war we're gonna just need to keep at it and keep at Hezbollah constantly, forever, because Israel needs it. And that's when the when the real world work will begin on yeah. the young people's psyche, I think. And hopefully we can go back to seeing your funny videos and like more about life, what it's like life here in Israel. Hopefully, you know, it feels so silly now, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Rennie Grinchman, thank you very much. Thank you so much.